Sermon of the Week 11. Confound it, they didn't even leave me my scroll. I'll see if I can find yours and get it to you, Hab said. You know, I see no reason for all this. You know, I'm the president. He said he took a towel and snapped one of the beasts on its nose. I don't either. What did he say? Hab asked again. He pushed one of the beasts away with his hand. He, he says nothing. I'm not sure he's even listening. Maybe someone just drugged these stinky lions. Have you ever seen such a mess? Poop and pee all over. I can't even sleep. How many days have we been in here, Hab? I think four. Hey, why don't you get me out of here? I'm the president. After all I've done for you, can't you hear me? The last phrase he virtually screamed. Hey, knock it off. The two heard a voice from outside the cell. It was the guard. Come in here and make me, Daniel said, exasperated. You better watch it, buddy, Hab cautioned. You know what the guard will do. Just take his spear and impale you. You better off. When you start calling out God, well, that doesn't usually end so well, Hab said. Daniel ground his hands together. I know, I know I'm a terrible person, but to the end of things in this pit, I don't get it. You know, when I talked to Gabe, he showed me such beautiful things. I just thought... His voice trailed off, and he slowly shook his head. He leaned over and took a scrap of bread from the plate of food Hab had brought him. He held it out. One of the young lions took it and scarfed it down. I never knew lions like bread. According to what I read, they will become vegetarians and the world made new. Yeah, that's what Gabe showed me. I just can't stand all the false accusations and the lying. So much lying. My vice president and the speaker of the house lie and scheme and lie and scheme. Yeah, twas ever thus, ever will be, Dan, Heb stood. I can hardly wait till he makes everything new, Daniel said. Better be careful or you won't see any of it, Heb said. When does he tell you he'll do that? You're a good guy, at least you'll see it. He hasn't told me much yet, I hope to hear more and know I'm no better than anyone else, Heb said. No, no, I hear good things of you. Well, thanks, but probably not all true. Well, I better get going. As he stepped toward the door, a young lion began to growl. He stopped dead in his tracks. Don't worry, they won't hurt you. You just worry about the crazy politicians and priests out there. They're the real threat. I guess he walked toward the door, knocked on it, and the guard let him out. He called back. Be careful of him. Doesn't pay to bargain with the Almighty. I suppose you're right. Hab was out of earshot. Daniel sat back down and began rubbing the back of one of his new furry buddies. You know, you guys are supposed to be the king, king of beasts. One of the older ones in the corner let out a great roar. Daniel raised his hand to try and appease him. It seemed to work. Just then he heard another voice, one he recognized. Don't trifle with me, pal, the deep voice said. I'm not. I'm just tired. Tired of what? What you incorrigible humans are doing? I'm tired, too. I've been dealing with all of you idiots for 3,471 years now. I wish I'd never made any of you. There was a pause. Sorry, I just can't contain my anger sometimes. I get that, but what earthly good am I doing in this stinky den with a bunch of weakling lions? It's all the plan. Plan, plan, all I hear from you is the plan, the plan. You lie, see no plan. Your people sit in exile and me here. We will get nothing done this way. Were you getting anything done in Jerusalem? Daniel thought a minute. He then shook his head. I give you that, but this place gets us nowhere. The voice cleared its throat and coughed. The floor shook a bit, bringing a few growls from the lions. Have you talked to Ezekiel? Yeah, I have. He is at a loss, too. And yes, we both read what you told Isaiah. Some guy born of some virgin is going to save the world. Sounds like some other concoctions of yours. It is true, as whatever I say is always true. Well, where is this guy, this savior of us all? His time has not yet come. Well, it better pretty soon, or there will be nothing left to save. On that point, we agree. You have some time tomorrow, the voice said. No, have to teach these lions a course in hunting, Daniel smirked. Well, then Friday. 
Yeah, I have an opening Friday afternoon, Daniel said, his voice full of sarcasm. Well, I'll be here at one. I want to discuss some things with you. Oh, I'll be here. Don't be late, the voice did not reply. You know, our Bible is filled with snippets from lives of prophets. Countless stories are told. One might think these people are meek and respectful at all times, especially with communicating and speaking with God. However, when you look closely, I believe the opposite is true. These people were not shrinking violets. They were strong and powerful men of faith. They had a faith that none of us can even approach. Abraham argued with God repeatedly. He even wanted to God to preserve the most wicked city in the world. Jacob spent a whole night in hand-to-hand -hand combat with God. I think Daniel, arguably the greatest Old Testament prophet, was no different. He was a slave, a foreigner, and an alien, yet he became president of the most powerful nation in the world. Yes, read Daniel 6, 2. You don't become president of the most powerful nation on the planet by being meek and humble all the time. You have to have an edge. I am so anxious to meet Daniel someday if I have that chance. I want to see what drives a human being to become a great prophet, one who can actually talk to and argue with the God of the universe face to face. However, I think there are two prophets that stand out above the rest. They are likely perceived by God to have the greatest faith of any humans save his son. They are the ones that God chose to give his testimony to, and what is that testimony? Revelation 19 tells, 19.10 tells us plainly, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Well, what does that mean? It means that God's Son, Jesus Christ, a member of the Godhead that created and runs our universe, not only knows the future, but also has a plan to preserve humanity. And God chose two solid humans to tell it to. Not only to tell it to, but tell it to the world in two short books composed of 12 and 22 chapters. He knew he could trust them to not only write down what he told them, but to take steps to ensure that future generations would be able to read the truth. These two books correctly outline the future, but also highlight the plan of salvation. The plan to save you and me from evil that pervades our little blue planet. God put both of them through immense difficulties during their lives, but gave each of them one shining moment. Daniel's most famous time was when he was put in a den of lions. The act was meant to get rid of him, kill him, but in fact it gave him a glimpse of what heaven would be like. We will be able to interact peaceably with all of God's creatures, and this moment is the one Daniel is most remembered for, especially by children. As children, we all know we are going to a new heaven and a new earth, but as soon as we become adults, we forget all about heaven and earth. Why, no one seems to know. John the Revelator also had one shining moment. He was chosen as the only disciple to be a witness to the culmination of God's great plan of salvation. All the others fled for their lives, but John didn't. He was present at the foot of the cross where God... Through his Son, Jesus Christ reeled in all the evil that has ever existed and in one glorious moment stamped it out forever and ever. There's very little hard evidence, according to the scholarly world, that Jesus ever existed. Certainly the Romans scrubbed him out of their texts, and certainly the Jews did the same, and no visible evidence in Palestine has been unearthed. Jesus' name has not been found written anywhere, not on one piece of pottery, one tomb, one coin, one stone, one monument. Well, not yet, anyway. However, one of these days it will be found, and it will go viral on every social media site the world over. I so want to see those postings. If there is one truth, no one can rewrite history. Truth will outlive any denials. I pray that day comes very soon. The book of Daniel was written over Daniel's lifetime from about 620 to 520 B.C. He wrote of seven major prophecies all verifiable today by our knowledge of history from other sources. But the one that really stands out from the others is his most detailed prophecy, that recorded in his 11th chapter. This prophecy begins with Daniel living at the same time as Darius the Mede, who took over the throne of Medo-Persia, the ruling empire of the time. 
You will remember that the previous empire of Babylon fell to the Medo-Persians in 535 B.C. Daniel now states he is in Darius the Medes' first year of reign, 522 B.C. His prophecy in Daniel 11 continues to lay out the events that will occur for the next 2,500 years or more. He not only provides information about what will happen, but who will make it happen. He tells of future kings of Medo-Persia but also of Alexander the Great, Daniel 11.3, and Julius Caesar, Daniel 11.6. In Daniel 11.5 and 8, he speaks of the most well-known Egyptian in history, Cleopatra. Daniel continues to refer to the most well-known persons in history throughout his marvelous chapter. Hannibal, Daniel 11.10. Charlemagne, Daniel 11.13. King Richard the Lionhearted, Daniel 11.18. Henry VIII of England, Daniel 11.28. Elizabeth I, Daniel 11.29. Martin Luther, Daniel 11.32. Louis XIV, Daniel 11.36. And Napoleon, Daniel 11.38-45. Daniel also refers to certain events. The Battle of Tours in 732 A.D., where Charles the Hammer Martel stopped the Muslim invasion of Europe. Daniel 11, 11. The Crusades, Daniel 11, 15 to 18. The Avignon Papacy, Daniel 11, 22. The Hundred Years' War, championed by Joan of Arc, Daniel 11, 27. The Spanish Armada of 1588 in Daniel 11, 30. The Inquisition in Daniel 11, 32. And the Napoleonic Wars, Daniel eleven thirty eight to forty five. All this information can be viewed on my prophecies of Daniel Facebook, of Daniel Facebook page or my website, https colon slash slash jpwase jpwase dot wixsite dot com slash Daniel eleven. However. Daniel doesn't end it there. He continues the story in his next chapter, number 12. He speaks of a time of trouble such as never was and goes on to outline the remaining years of history until Christ returns to give us an earth made new. When hearing this sermon, please remember one point. The Apostle Peter makes in 2 Peter 1.20 knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. You can study everything out, but in the end it all fits with history and will continue to do so, every word of it. When you have some time on your hands, delve into Daniel's book. I assure you, it will constantly amaze you. Let's return to see how our reluctant zookeeper is doing. Daniel, you there? The voice said, waking Daniel with a start. He was sleeping with one of the lion cubs and it started licking his face. He whisked it away and his mother growled her disapproval. You there, Danny? The voice repeated. Yeah, yeah, what do you want now? You said you'd have some time for me at one this afternoon and it's one thirty. I apologize for being late, but there was a 911 call from your buddy Ezekiel. I have some more information to give you. You know, maybe I should not take any more information from you. Seems every time you give me info, it gets me into more trouble. That bit about Nebuchadnezzar losing his mind and that statue telling him his kingdom would crash and burn, that didn't sit well. And that meanie business nearly killed me in that takeover. Now I sit with hungry lions. Maybe I should, uh, pal, you... Do you know who this is? The voice said in an unmistakable firm tone. Yes, sir, go ahead. With that, the voice began to detail the outline of what would become chapter 11 of Daniel's book. Chapter 11, eh? Daniel said. Yes, that is just the outline. Study it. I will review it with you later and provide more detail along with video. Daniel stared at the little cub which had returned to his lap. He shook his head and the cub mimicked him. You know, Leo, the world's a hard place. Little Leo seemed to understand and nipped at Daniel's right hand. Ouch, Daniel said, rubbing the bite mark. But one thing, Daniel continued, there is some guy out there watching out for us. The book of Daniel is just 12 short chapters, but comprises a plethora of prophecies. There are seven major ones, Daniel 2, the image, 
Daniel 4, Nebuchadnezzar's and the Hebrew nation's madness. Daniel 7, beasts. Daniel 8, 2300 days. Daniel 9, 70 weeks. Daniel 11, history from 522 BC to the time of the end, 1798 AD. And Daniel 12, time of trouble, time of the end events, 1798 to present and future. All of biblical prophecy, including Daniel and the Revelation, has been interpreted and reinterpreted countless ways and with countless, me countless methods. But all these interpretations have some truth, and as the ways and methods escalate, the results combine to come nearer and nearer to the actual truth. God doesn't always make things easy, as he knows many will then not care. He created man with a desire to learn, and there is no greater satisfaction than learning something we didn't know. A child is never so proud as when he can say his ABCs. A teen student never so proud as when he or she learns well enough to pass a course, and an adult when solving some difficult problem. Daniel starts out life with good parents who taught him well. He would stick to what he learned, even at the point of death, even as a teenager. He was hauled away from home at a young age and never mentions his parents, who were likely victims of Babylon's takeover of Israel. But during his exile, which became permanent, he learned. He relied on his childhood teaching and became, and came to rely fully on his God. He never forgot any of his upbringing and gained the respect of all whom he came in contact with. In fact, he eventually became president of the empire which ruled the civilized world. He was a king, but I expect Daniel probably had limitless power and with only a bit of cunning could have taken over full power and made the king his puppet. We are not told why Daniel did not proceed with a coup, but we can readily see this was not in his character nor in his plans. He knew that his God, the God of the universe, was running things and he was determined to follow only God's plan. We are not told when he died. It was likely about 520 B.C. Six cities claim his tomb, but the most famous tomb is located in Susa in southern Iran. The story goes that the rich and the poor fought over the possession of Daniel's body, and finally a casket was suspended over a chain in the city. Fishing was banned there as the fish's gills glinted with gold, and if you entered it, you would drown. The prophet Ezekiel mentions him three times. In Ezekiel 28.3, God says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. But he also mentions Daniel twice in Ezekiel 14, in conjunction with Noah and Job. I expect these three were taken to heaven and are now looking down on us. I expect Daniel spends each and every waking moment watching his prophecies unfold. But also, he must have a constant anxiety as he watches Christ's ongoing preparations for that final prophecy. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. Daniel 12:13. Daniel was startled by a hammering on the bars of his and the lion's cell. It was now Saturday, and Daniel was about to begin his prayers. His influence had allowed for religious tolerance and the Hebrews were allowed to worship in peace. He being locked up decided that he would pray for an hour. He had just knelt when the hammering began. President, President Daniel, are you in there? Daniel, thinking it was some of his congressional members who conspired to put him in here in the first place, kept praying. Daniel, President, it's your king Darius. Are you alive? How badly are you hurt? Finally, Daniel, recognizing the king's voice, stood and went to the gate. Oh, hi, Derry. How are you? Me and my buddies here were just having a little church service. But you, they're lions. They're wild beasts. Killers. How? You know, dear, if, you to if I told you once, I've told you a thousand times. My God is in control. He won't let anything happen to his people. I know, I know, but... See, not a scratch. He pulled up his sleeve, exposing a very muscular forearm. Without thinking, Darius said, Guard, open the gate and release my president. The guard opened the gate to let Daniel out. Standing next to the king was the amazed speaker of the House of Congress. The gate opened and Daniel stepped out in an instant. 
The huge lioness leaped and grabbed the speaker by the arm. She easily pulled the speaker back into the den and the feast began. The guard immediately slammed the gate closed. King, King, you can't let them. But all realized it was too late. Within minutes, the feast was over. Daniel and the still distraught Darius walked slowly back to the palace. You know, dear, I really enjoyed my time with the lions. It gave me some time to think. Was your God with you in there? He must have been, Darius said. Yes, he always is. You know, he gave me some more information. Darius' face filled again with fear. Every time he had received similar information, things had not gone well. I'm not sure I... I can I get a time slot for next week, say Wednesday at 1? Darius thought for a moment, but then realized who he was talking to, a guy as president who had just spent a relaxing week with a dozen lions. Sure, <clears throat> one will be fine. <clears throat> I'd like to present it as part of my presidential address to you in Congress for 522 B.C. I'll arrange it, Darius said, though his insides were churning as he feared more bad information was coming his way. Good, good. Well, I better get home and see the family. My wife will be so happy and my kids. Well, they'll want to hear the lion's stories. Daniel, I just want to apologize to you and them. He began to bow. Daniel quickly took Darius' hand to prevent him from doing so. All in God's plan, my king, all in God's plan. You are right, Daniel. Blessings to you and your wonderful family. He turned to head for the palace and a long, cool drink. Oh, one thing more, Daniel said, taking his arm. Don't forget to say your prayers.